What's up guys, Tristan Parker here and I'm committed to helping you guys up your website design game and your business. Today, I'm showing you step by step how you can easily take your business website to the next level by using page animations, scrolling effects, a little bit of parallax to create a professional and engaging business website. So last week, I showed you how to create the perfect hero section. Now, if you haven't done that already, there is a link down in the description if you wanna check that out. But if you haven't, don't worry, you will still get a ton of value from this video. Implementing what I'm about to show you is so simple, you'll notice that this video is only 15 or 20 minutes long and it will stand you apart from other competitors in your niche. So let's jump on the computer and get started. So if you followed along last week, this is as far as we got. We've put together a hero section for your business website and we have our value proposition, we have the benefits of the business and we have a call to action here. So we're gonna further this today. Um, by that I mean we're gonna add some nice animated fade-ins, we're gonna create some parallax and put some nice effects on the image that appear when we scroll. Now before we get into it, I just wanna let you know that I have put together a navigation that you can see in here. And if I click that, I have simply just used the list widget, which if I go over to widgets and search list, it's this one here. You can just click and drag that over here and style it as you please. But that's exactly what I've done here. And that's still all available in the free version. Now, in order to achieve what I'm about to show you in this video, you are going to need the pro version of Elementor. Now it does only cost $50 which I think is actually worth its weight in gold. You know, it's gonna save you hours of your time, which for $50 is invaluable. So what we're gonna do, I'm thinking this large hero image that we have in the background, initially on page load, I'm gonna want that to fade in. And then once that's faded in, I wanna create almost like a sequence where the whole header bar will fade in afterwards. Then once that's faded in, I want the text to come in. But I'm thinking the text can come in slightly differently rather than just a straight fade. We can maybe bring it up from the bottom, we could bring it down from the top or from the left. We'll see what looks good when we get to it. Then I'm thinking once all of that is, is faded in that I wanna bring the button in last and I'm gonna fade the button in and the reason for that is if it's the last thing that comes in onto the page, it's gonna draw the user's attention to it. It is our call to action, so to me that just makes sense. Then once we have all of our fading animations, I'm thinking let's just add a little bit of parallax. So I want the image to change while I'm scrolling and I'm thinking maybe adding a blur of some sort, which will be a very nice effect and I'll show you what I mean by that. As well as the navigation, one thing to note is I've added an entire new page content section down here where I've just thrown some Lauren Ipsen in. And now the reason for doing that is because our hero section fits the entire height of the page and because we're gonna be adding scrolling effects, we're not gonna be able to see those if we have no content to scroll down to. So that's the reason for this. By all means, add whatever content that you want. I'm sure you've got other page content for your homepage, so you'll be absolutely fine there. But for this example, I've just thrown Lauren Ipsum in, which is just placeholder text. But essentially, we're just gonna work on this a little bit further and make it look more professional and engaging. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on the background image here. So we need to come over to our navigator. Now, if you can't see the navigator, just right click anywhere on the page and then go down to navigator and this will appear. You'll also notice I've labeled my navigator sections. You can do that just by double clicking on it and it will allow you to edit it like so. So because we're working with the hero section first, we wanna select that section. And then over on the left-hand side, we're gonna to go to advanced. And then down here, you'll see a motions effects panel. So first let's just take care of the fade in and you'll see that there's an entrance animation option. And we can just simply get a fade in and it's gonna give you an example of how that looks. Now I want the duration of this to be nice and slow. There we go, so it gives that nice softer feel to it. And I wanna put a 500 millisecond delay, so half a second delay, and that just sort of like allows for any minor lag that might appear when the browser loads the website. That's it, that's how simple it is to add a fade-in animation to an element, and you can add fade-ins to absolutely anything as long as you click it, and you get an advanced and motion effect. So now that we have the hero fading in, I wanna add a fade-in to the header. So same thing applies, we head over to header, Go to advanced, it's already selected for us here, and entrance animation, we're gonna go fade in. So because I want these to fade in in a sequence, we need to add animation delay. So the animation delay on the hero section was 500 milliseconds. So on this one, I want it to come in slightly afterwards. So I'm gonna put in a thousand milliseconds, which is a second. 
So now we have the fade in on our hero and we have the fade in on our header. Now I want to start looking at the text. Now there's a couple ways that we could do this. We could select each individual element within our container here and apply a animation fade in. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the entire container and it's going to fade this entire left hand block in. Again, go to advanced entrance animation and we can go to fade in, but I think for this I want a slightly different effect. And I'm going to say fade in up and you'll see that it comes in from the bottom. Now we can play around with the animation duration and I'm going to go with slow. Again, it gives that nice softer feel to it. As we are adding a animation sequence, I'm going to put this one to 1500. So you'll notice I'm incrementing it by half a second, which is 500 milliseconds. Cool. So let's save that. Click update. And let's hit preview changes to see how that's looking. There we go. So let me just refresh that again. We've got one, two, three. Perfect, so you'll notice that it's a very subtle animation sequence which makes the page load very nice and soft and engaging. So let's keep going with this. So as I mentioned earlier, the, the call to action of the page is essentially really important. We want to, in this circumstance, be driving people to the store. So I want to also add a fading animation to the button and I want it to be the last item that appears once everything else is in place. And we can do that by selecting the button, going over to advance, click in motion effects and again entrance animation fade in now we want to add a slightly longer delay on this because we need to take into account that this fades in after half a second this fades in after a second this fades in after a second and a half it probably has maybe a second a second or so animation coming from the bottom to the top so I'm going to set this to 2600 so there'll be a slight pause once this is in place then the button will come in so again, let's update. So you'll notice that the animation hadn't completed before the button faded in. So we're just going to fix that. And we can do that just by adding a slightly longer delay on here. So let's try 2000. Let's go 3000. 3, so after three seconds, the button will fade in. perfect I'm, I'm more than happy with that and I mean feel free to play around with the uh, animation timings uh, this is just what I'm using to create some form of sequence so what we have here is our background fades in our header bar fades in then our text comes in from the bottom and finally our button call to action is fading in last to draw the people's attention to it great so let's keep going with this let's keep improving it now I want to work a little bit more on the hero section in the background and I want to add a scroll effect to the image. Now the best way to do this is head back over to our hero and select it from the navigator. Now one thing to note here is we're not relying on the motion effects in the advanced panel and this is because any scrolling effect we apply to the hero section is going to apply to everything inside it. The scroll effect that I want to apply is to be applied just to the image. So let's head over to style while we have our hero container selected. You'll notice that we've got scrolling effects inside the style background image as well. So we want to turn those on and we're given a collection of events that we can use. So we've things like vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, transparency, if we wanted to you know, fade the image in and out, depending on the scroll position, blur and scale. So I'm thinking for this, we're just going to rely on blur. I'd like to blur the image out as we scroll down the page. So click the little pencil and you'll notice that the image blurs right away and as we scroll down it becomes a little bit clearer. So we actually want the opposite of this to happen. So head back over to direction and click fade out. Now you'll notice that not really a lot happens to the image and that's fine. And that's because we need to adjust our viewport options. Now at the moment it's sort of suggesting that the animation will take place within these two scroll positions. Now our hero section is right at the top. So we want to amend that and put it to 100%. And as we scroll down, boom, it's a lot blurrier. You'll notice that our image still isn't quite sharp from the top position, and that's because we need to adjust our bottom scroll point as well, and we want to drag that up to the 50% mark. And there we go. That now means our image is sharp, and as we scroll down, it's going to blur out. Now, you can adjust the level of blur depending on your preferences, if you were going to go with the blur effect. Uh, let's stick 
about on 10 and see what it looks like. So yeah, that's, that's quite a nice blur in my opinion. So I think that's pretty nice. Now I know I said I was only going to use blur, but let's add a little bit of scale to this as well. And we're going to scale the image up as we scroll down. So we're ready from this, like actually it looks it looks pretty good. And um, I'm going to bring that up to 50% to just include more of the image. It's not going to pre-scale it essentially. And then you can adjust the speed. So if you want it a bit more subtle, you can lower that speed and you'll notice that the um, the intensity of the scale is is not so harsh. Now if I up the speed to like 9, you'll see that it scales a lot faster. So let's put that on, let's go with 1. No, let's go with 2. Again, it's really important to keep animations really subtle and things with parallax really subtle because there's a fine line between it looking you know, nice and professional and it looking like a wacky Microsoft PowerPoint presentation where you've got things flying in from left, right and center. That isn't professional. So absolutely recommend you keeping things as simple and as clean as possible. So there we've got a nice background image scroll. So there we've got a nice background image uh, blur on scroll, which is looking really nice. I think we can uh, we can further this a little bit more. So here's our text focal point, and I think it would be nice if we can add a little bit of parallax to this and, and drag it down to f almost follow us down the page as this content comes in and as this sort of blurs out. So we can do that by selecting our column. So looking over at our navigator, we've, we're inside Hero and we've got column selected. So again, head over to advanced, motion effects, and go to scrolling effects. Now adding the parallax effect uh, to scroll up and down, we want to select vertical scroll. Now if you wanted something to scroll uh, left and right, you would just select the horizontal scroll. So let's click vertical. Once this pencil's checked, the vertical scroll is applied to this container, and we can see that just by scrolling. So there you go. You can see that effect, which is quite nice. It's coming down. You know, some would argue that maybe it's too much, but for now I'm just going to roll with it. Another thing that we can do while all of this is taking place is maybe just reduce the transparency of this so it looks like it's coming down but fading out as we scroll away from it, which could look pretty nice. So let's click transparency, fade out is selected, and you can change these depending on your preferences. So if we scroll down, there we go, you'll notice that it's fading out. So, you know, that's quite a nice effect. It looks a little bit strange while we've got all of these containers in view, but I will show you what this looks like shortly. But before we do that, one final thing I want to do is get rid of this harsh line. I'm thinking a nice, I don't know, curve or uh, horizontal, um, sort of like diagonal uh, line could um, could look good here and just break up the, the the sharpness of the edge. So let's look at that and we can, again, we can rely on Elemental to take care of this for us really easily. So let's head over to Hero, make sure you've got the whole Hero section selected. Go to Style and then come down and you will notice a section called Shape Divider. So select that and we can add a divider to either the top or we can add a divider to the bottom. So in this situation we want to add a divider to the bottom. So select bottom and then we want to choose what type. And there are loads in here. You've got you know, drops which are you know pretty wacky. Uh, we've got tilt which uh, is, is quite nice if you want to create sort of section breaks in your page. Tilt could be a really nice option for you. Um, but I'm looking for, let's go with curve. Now, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I want it to curve the other way. So we can swap that by just selecting invert. And again, already that's looking better. It looks a little bit strange. So I'm just going to play around with the height. It's probably a little bit too high. And then let's, yeah, let's play around with the width, then the height. There we go. So that's, I mean, that's looking pretty nice to me. So if we save that, let's check what it's looking like on the preview side. Great. So everything's fading in nicely. If we scroll down, awesome. Our image is blurring. This is coming down with us and fading out. And we've got that nice curve at the bottom, which just gives us a bit of a section break. And also when the page loads, the user will be able to tell that there's content underneath and they are more likely to scroll down. 
So hopefully you can appreciate how powerful Elemental Pro is in terms of adding things like subtle animations and parallax to your hero section. And just with you know simple things like sequence and fade-ins, you can have a really nice effect on your website. You can engage the user from page load, you can grip them and you can just entice them in, get them to scroll down to view more. And yeah, it's just real nice subtleties. So there you go. Hopefully you found that really valuable. Now everything I've just shown you actually isn't just limited to the hero section. You can implement all of that stuff throughout your entire website to make it stand out from other businesses in your niche. So make sure you let me know how you got on in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. If you have liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the YouTube algorithm in helping other people find my content. There are tons of other videos on this channel, all designed to help you up your website design game and your business. If you haven't done so already, recommend you hitting the subscribe button and hit the bell notification because then you'll be alerted of future releases. So make sure you go and check out the other videos in the channel and I will catch you in the next one.